Peace and blessings, guys. Peace and blessings. Mark the Messenger. We're back on our video. This one's going to be about five ways how the devil tempts us. And uh, before I go on with this video, there's a lot of background noise, so I got to hold it. I got to use my mic. I'm not sure how long this could last for. But I, I wasn't going to let me stop this from making this video. So good, let's go. Let's go. All right. So the reason why Satan tempts you is because he wants you to sin. He wants you to go against God. Okay. When Jesus um, was fasting for 40 days, 40 nights, even the devil came up to him and started tempting him. Okay, and why why was Satan tempting him to, to get him to sin, to get him to go off the path that God has placed him on? Okay, so best believe Satan's going to try to test, uh, sorry, tempt you. Okay, Satan's going to try to tempt you, whatever God has for you, uh, to get you to you know fall to, to, to fall straight, to go to go back where you know God has already delivered you from. So understand that that when when Satan is tempting you, it's all to go backwards. Okay, there's a scripture I'm gonna go over. It talks about this in James chapter one, verse thirteen to fifteen. It lets us know that. God is not tempting us, so it has to be the devil. Okay, so this is uh, verse 13. It says, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempt he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then lust hath conceived, it bring forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bring forth death. Okay, so exactly what, even, um, Remember when uh, G Jesus told, or sorry, sorry, Satan told Jesus to jump off the bridge or jump off the cliff, you know, go kill yourself. Okay, so check this out. Verse 15 says, um, and it bring forth sin and sin when it's finished, bring forth death. Okay, so when when Satan has tempted you, his his mission is to get you to be killed spiritually. If it's not physical death, then it's a spiritual death. So always, guys, always have the armor on, be guarded and see how Jesus defeated the devil was through the word of God. So that's why it's important to study to show yourself approved. All right, let's get it. Let's go. Number one, the number one way how Satan tempts us, guys, he tempts you to be afraid and to be discouraged. OK, there was many times on my walk. There was many times on my walk where um, when, I, when I was first being called, when God's first calling me and I noticed like a lot of my so-called friends, uh, family members who would like laugh at me. Um, you know, why are you doing that? Why all of a sudden are you doing that? You know, like this making me look like I'm so like, I'm just like the biggest weird crazy person and Satan was using them to d get me to, to be discouraged and also, you know, back when I was uh, ministering to people on the streets, people were telling me, you know, be careful, you know, th th there's shootings around here and stuff like that, just like pushing fear on me and I, I had this, I had the Holy Spirit, I was fear, I was, I was uh, filled back then so I didn't like, I didn't have, I was just like, why are you telling me that? Like, what the heck? Like, all the times I would go before God was calling me to do what I was do, they didn't care. But now I'm all of a sudden, you know, I'm saving souls. Now all of a sudden it's a big issue. Be be afraid, you know, it just all trying to discourage you. And that is an attack of your faith. And that is Satan using them, okay? That's why, guys, when God's calling you to, um, maybe you trying to minister in the hood or in an area that's, you know, maybe not safe or whatever the case may be, it's important to know the word of God. It says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, that God has not given us a spirit of fear but a power and love and sound mind. Okay, so a power, which is through the Holy Spirit, because that's what, when, you, when you get in the Holy Spirit, you gain power. So you gain power, a sound mind, so you know how to move out here, and you have love, okay? You have love for people just because they might be struggling. You don't, we're not like these religious Pharisees who condemn people or make them feel like, or like, we check, you know, judge other people. No, we have love for someone. If someone's, in, you know, struggling, we pray for them. Because that's what, because the love of God's in us, you know. Now, some people, they, some people, religious people, they don't have that in them. They don't have the love of God in them. But us children of God, we love because God first loved us. Okay, next one up. Okay, Satan will tempt you to stir discord among the brethren. All right, well, this is what Satan does. I see this a lot. Okay, especially in these last days, I'm seeing it. Okay, uh, men or women who have demonic strongholds in their mind, men or women who gave their life to Christ, which is good and all. But best believe, guys, when you give your life to Christ, the war doesn't end. The war actually begins. The war actually starts. Okay, and these people, whatever they were doing before they give their life to Christ, these people still have those spirits on them. Okay, they still have those demonic strongholds that they haven't been delivered from. Okay, and if this is you. Got to start praying, fasting, and being patient in due time. You'll be healed. You got to fully surrender, okay? And Satan works to these people who are still of this world. The people who, and see how Satan could work through someone too when you have the love of the world in you. Satan could work through those people, those Christians, okay, those Hebrew Israelites. Okay, I'm telling you, that doesn't really mean much. How someone lives their life is what really matters, okay? So when someone has a love of the world in them, Satan could use them, okay? So best believe, okay, Satan will, and the Bible says, that God hates those who store discord among the brethren. Okay, God hates those. That's an abomination.
Okay, so Satan see Satan, he love he loves when to do, do the things that God hates. Okay, he likes to make God angry. Don't these agents, don't these devils try to do the same thing to you? Try to make you angry, try to tempt you, okay, try to provoke you to anger, provoke you to rage. That's what they do. Okay, so always understand that. And see, when when someone's sowing discord among you, when someone's throwing strife, when someone's falsely accusing you, when someone's bearing false witness, someone's lying and slandering slandering your name, be still. You don't even have to respond because God will respond. Okay. I've seen it happen so many times, so many times. God will respond. Continue to do what God has called you to do and keep on leveling up because saying he wants you to respond. He wants you to, to go back and forth because that's a distraction. And that's how another thing how saying could tempt you by distracting you. So he's looking for something. He's looking for someone who has strongholds, someone who's weak. Okay. Someone who's lukewarm, someone who has the love of the world in them. He's looking, he's waiting and he's seeking for someone to destroy. Number three. Satan will lie to you about doing God's will and staying on the narrow path. There's this biggest lie I see in the Christian community, okay? Talking about once saved, always saved, okay? And yes, it is true that we're saved by grace through faith alone, okay? That is true, but the Bible says faith without works is dead. So what are you doing for God's kingdom, okay? What are you doing to build your spirit up? Because that once saved, always saved gives people the illusion, the delusion, I would say, the delusion of you could live a life of willful sin. You don't have to repent. All you have to do is believe in Jesus and that's it. Okay, that's a huge deception. That is a lie from the devil. Okay, what does Satan tell Eve in the garden? If you do this, you won't die. You won't die. You'll be like, you'll be like God. Okay, he lied to them and Eve bit it. Okay, Eve fell for it. The weak vessel, she fell for it. And Adam being, you know, loving his wife, loving his wife to hell, <laughs> you know, loving his wife to sin. Okay. He, f he fell along with this. So guys, best believe you're guarding your mind, you're guarding your soul, your spirit. Okay. Your vessel with God's truth. Okay. Don't let no one lie to you. Let no one deceive you. The Bible says in the last days, there'll be many false prophets. And I understand the Bible also says that people will have itching ears and go to teachers who will tell them what they want to hear not what they need to hear so once saved always saved you're saved by grace jesus, all you have to do is say believe in jesus and that's it that sounds good that sounds easy but when it comes to denying yourself when it comes to living a life of repentance when it comes to living a life of obedience keeping god's commandments okay now it's the issue because a lot of people are slothful a lot of people are lazy a lot of people don't want to be fired up okay you got to either be on fire or you're going to be either be cold. Don't be lukewarm. Don't be in between. Stay in your lane. Don't be it. Don't be hot and then cold, hot and cold. Think about it, guys. We don't want to eat food, right? Think about like we're like at five guys in and out, uh, whatever, right? We don't like our food like hot and cold. You know, we like it hot, but not too hot. Okay. We don't like our, we don't like our food. Like, like one, one uh, side is hot. Like say like a pizza, right? One bite is hot. The next one's cold. That's really good. Spit it out. That's the same thing God's going to do with the lukewarm. He's going to spit you out. Number four, Satan tempts, tempts with worldly gains such as money, pleasure, fame, power, etc. Okay. Yes, Satan tempts with worldly gain. Okay. This is a scripture I'm going to go over. Okay. So, so even Satan tempted Jesus with worldly gain, with fame and money. Let's check this out. Okay, this is in Matthew chapter 4, verse 8 to 12. It says, again, the devil take him up to the exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said unto him, all these things will I give unto thee if thou fall down and worship me. Okay, then said Jesus unto him, get thee hence, saying, for it is written, thou shalt worship thy God, thy father, and him only shall thy serve. Okay, then the devil leave him and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Okay, so that's what happens, guys. When Satan's trying to, to tempt you, when Satan's trying to get you to backslide, to fall short, to sin against God, okay, and you and you don't you don't fall into those temptations, he he'll leave you alone. He's gonna go mess with someone else who's who's weak, someone else who, who has lie, who's inheriting lies from a false teacher, a false prophet, telling you once saved always say he's gonna go mess with them. When when Satan's trying to tempt you and you're not falling for it, he's, he has no other choice but to leave you alone because he knows, oh, he's wise, he's a child of wisdom. Okay, he, he's not falling for it. So I'm going to go mess with someone else. I'm going to go mess with someone else who's not equipped with the full armor of God. I'm going to go mess with someone else who doesn't know the word of God because they could be deceived. Okay, they could be easily deceived. So I'm going to go mess with them. Okay, so even even Satan, and see when Satan attempted him and Jesus didn't fold, he didn't fold under pressure. Woo! 
<laughs> he didn't follow under pressure, right? Okay. He left him alone. And see, and throughout the Bible, it never says that Satan came to bother him. See what, what Satan did, though? He had to use Peter. He had to jump in um, and Judas. He had to use other people around him because Jesus was too strong. Woo! He was too strong. He was too fired up. He could have say it's all. Dang, he's a chosen one. I can't mess with him. I got to use someone else around him. That's how the devil works. He's a coward. That's why the Bible says all cowards shall be fall, uh, shall be thrown in the lake of fire because Satan's a coward. So anyone who's not willing to stand for something, for to be bold like a lion, okay. You got to either stand for something or fall for anything. Okay, so best believe, guys, when Satan should attempt you and he sees that, you know, you just can't fold. I just I, I try to use everybody. It just don't work. He's going to leave you alone. He will leave you alone. The Bible says resist the devil and he will flee from you. Jesus resisted him. He fleed. Okay, now the devil could come back if you're opening doors. And since we're, we're in our human nature, we're in our flesh, we're going to make mistakes. We're going to do things. So Satan will try to tempt you again because you opened the door. You know, I have many videos on this talking about things that open uh, doors in the spirit realm for demons, devils, witches to come and attack you. So if you guys haven't checked it out, make sure you guys check that out. Number five is, guys, if you made it this far, please make sure you guys are liking this video, subscribe to, subscribe to the channel. It pushes the video out on the algorithm. More people need to see this, okay? Um, you you got to support. You got to support. It costs zero dollars to hit the like button. We got to get this message out. Okay, number five is Satan will tempt you to hold on to past sins. Ooh, yes, yes, yes. Satan will tempt you to hold on to past sins, unforgiveness, and to hold on to grudges. Okay, the Bible says that we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. And one of the devices he used to get you to hold on to your past sins, let's say like three years ago, you had a certain sin, a certain addiction, and God has set you free from it, and you don't do it no more. And that sin is causing guilt. It's causing shame. OK, but you, you repented. You, you're, you're no longer that person. You've been born again. You've been baptized. You've been filled with the Holy Spirit. OK, and Satan's going to remind you of your past sins. OK, and remember, you got to make sure that you, you've repented of him because if you know, because if, you, if you're not that person more, Satan will do that. OK, and also he will cause, you know, to get you to be unforgiveness. And, and when you guys, when you have unforgiveness in your heart, you have to be very careful doing that because. That could also open the door for saying in, okay? When, when someone lied to you or someone, you know, did some messed up thing to you, right, too? You got to forgive them because we want God to forgive us for our sins. We're making mistakes, okay? We not, we not be, might be hurting other people like they hurt us, but we all, at the end of the day, we all make mistakes. We're humans, okay? So if if Satan sees, oh, he's not, he's not being forgiven how God instructs us to be, okay? And see, when you have the love of Christ in you, you're going to forgive other people, okay? Because you, because Christ, you, you, you have the love in you. You're a child of God. Okay, so best believe, guys, if you're living in unforgiveness, someone who hurts you and you ain't letting them go, saying can work through that. Okay, and holding on to grudges. All right, when you're holding on to grudges, saying could also work through that too. Okay, it's, he's looks at telling you, saying he's seeking for someone to devour. He's he's seeking. He's looking. Someone who's weak. Someone who's not equipped in the word of God. So arm yourself, guys. Okay, these are the five ways of the devil. Tempt says, number one, is Satan will tempt you to be afraid and discouraged. Number two, is Satan will tempt you to stir up discord and run the brethren among the body in Christ, body of Christ. Number three, is Satan will lie to you about doing God's will and staying on the narrow path. Okay, so Satan will tell you like, oh, you could live however you want. Just believe in Jesus and that's it. Okay, number four, is Satan tempts uh, with worldly gains such as money, pleasure, fame, and power, etc. Number five is Satan will tempt you to hold on to past sins, unforgiveness, and to hold on to grudges. Okay, I love you guys so much i hope you guys learned some of this video like i said if you haven't already make sure you guys smash the like button share this video i love you guys so much i'm out peace